Welcome to part 5 of our threat hunt using Jupyter Notebook series guys. So in this particular episode we are going to hunt on persistent technique okay and our target is WMI eventing. So if you see I have already a persistent WMI eventing notebook created and what is the hypothesis guys. So advisories might be leveraging WMI for persistence in my environment. Now why it is very much important on very much easy because WMI is the Microsoft implementation of web based enterprise right and it has nearly any convenient way for making good techniques of persistence because WMI can talk to any of your system processes um, uh, any of your like uh, services antivirus products startup command and anything so WMI object communicate with each and every process and that might be present into your machine so basically you need three things filter consumer and binding and once you have that if you can spawn up and if you can use that particular thing to tell wmi to do malicious stuff you can almost bypass your mechanism so that is the reason we are going to hunt for it and we are going to do the same thing as the way we have keep on doing it first we will uh, do the initialization part we will uh, just copy paste from our other notebooks once we are done with this particular initialization we will do the data loading we have again a dummy data for our tutorial purpose once we have done with this data loading so data loading means uh, you need to wget the data and you need to unzip that particular data once that is done we are going to parse that particular data basically so parsing is required so that means we are going to create a file which is nothing but uh, uh, two files over here so uh, one file is basically um, your session file on which you are creating your file uh, table and next one is your temporary table format okay so what is our first analytics guys in this particular area so first analytics is always important because that is the pivot point on which you need to go for so it's pretty simple we are looking for wmi event filter get registered okay so event filter get registered always remember user created wmi filter it registers in windows event id 19 in syswan logs and we are going to identify the timestamp host name user event namespace name and query by which that wmi get registered okay so let us run that query and let us see what exactly the output that we are expecting out of it. So now if you see over here, so quite interesting stuff is going on. So if you see again the same user, uh, it's created that even namespace in root directory. Okay, process name is updater and what is the query it is running. So select star from instance modified event within 60 where target instance is ISA W32 performance and perf data uh, a perf OS system basically. Okay, so this particular area can give you some hint that um, if you are your your data set has a user created wmi filter okay so now if we move on to the next one where we will see our analytics to look for event consumer registration okay which is the windows event id or uh, sysmon event id 20 that will give you another hint and we will search the data and we will try to identify and correlate with our first result okay so now it's quite simple we are looking for windows event id 20 and now if you go to this particular data over here now look at this amazing section guys over here so again the same user that we have seen in this particular uh, our first analytics as well it is running the updater okay and what is the command line it is using windows service system again powershell execution but hidden process okay so that means it is trying to hide itself that means uh, it, oh, you won't see that there is a screen flashing it is trying to uh, do some malicious script so user will be totally unaware what is exactly happening and you see there is a lot of hashed code or there is a lot of encrypted code at the back end okay so that means the this particular command where user has created WMI consumer is up to something okay so you can just go there and you can collect this particular data as you can see this is ending with uh, uh, double uh, 
the sign so that means this particular data is uh, very uh, easily you can crack this particular data it's base 64 format right you can crack this particular thing down but the ultimate motive of our case user has created a wmi consumer which is suspicious okay now moving on to our third analytics where we will see that this wmi consumer whether it is a binding filter or not okay and we will go for identifying event number 21 exact same thing we have seen event id 19 event id 20 and event id 21 okay so where exactly we are trying to see whether the user has created any wmi consumer binding filter or not okay so now if you see the output guys you will see that this is the consumer okay that the user has created so first the user has created a very quick way created a wmi filter then the user created a wmi consumer and then it is using wmi subscription inside that particular consumer okay so what is that particular subscription if you see it is a command line consumer again we have seen but this is the subscription okay and we have seen inside this particular updater command where we have seen uh, this base 64 powershell encoding technique was getting used right so that means obviously this process is suspicious you need to look into it so now moving on to our next level which is our last analytics for this particular area where we are going to see whether the wmi subscription to filter consumer binding has been created or not so which is the um, windows event id 565861 we will keep on doing it for sysmon log so far but this time we need to look for the windows event id to prove our hypothesis that whatever the steps that we have seen so far from this particular user it is trying to use that particular filter to bind it using wmi right so now if you see in this particular area same thing name and query exactly the same thing wql is the query language that is being used and remember guys so this is the interesting thing target system up time target system up time in this particular area the user is binding that particular wmi object inside it so you know then by looking at this particular area and you can go to identify all all of the parameters okay so you can simply you can simply sit and you can keep on uh, uh, checking what exactly the connector sid what exactly the full command line consumer that the particular user has used for this particular technique but at the bottom end you have seen where a user has used wmi eventing and trying to load the powershell script has used a base 64 encode and format and it has given you a phenomenal way to look into this particular machine and try to see what is going on so that's all guys i'll see you in part six